Now we're live. We're back. Let's see. We're back. Wash it off now. It's my card. Really you can hear it again. Yeah. If it goes out again. It says we're on live. One viewer on each. Oh, here we go. Two on Facebook. We should probably delete seven. that. Yeah, do you want to delete the other one? I don't know. I mean, we can do that after, but. Okay. Yeah, now we're back. Okay. Sorry, everyone. Nature, Mother Nature. We're alive. Yeah, we made it. Okay. We're just going to jam. You go with that? Yeah. Okay. Welcome, everyone. This is Let's Make Art. We are doing our live letter along. This is once a month when I'm here in California with the crew, Missouri. When you're here in Missouri. I'm from California. I'm in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. We're in Missouri. I want, we wouldn't have thunderstorms and lightning storms in summer. This Sorry. It's not exciting in California. It's okay. So. Anyways, I'm here in Missouri with everyone. You all know Sarah. Hello. This is Campbell. He works with our warehouse team. And Keenan's in the back. I'm here. Do you want to say hi? Not as loud as normal. Because I have his mic. Yeah, because we're sharing. <laughs> you can say hi at some point. Um, okay, so we are doing our world project. So this is, Sarah and I did this when we recorded it. This is the one, these are the ones that we did together. This one's mine. Yeah, you made that. Oh my gosh. Oh, you want to hold it? I <laughs> Are you impressed that you good. made yes. yeah, that's awesome. Oh my god. You were genuinely surprised? Yes. It looks so good. I, I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> um, so this is what we're going to do today. You can either paint along with us or you can just join us. And as always, I do this on, they do Q and A's on Thursday. So feel free to ask any questions. Sarah will help read any comments. If you guys are having any issues um, with your lettering, I'm here to help. So we, I'm just going to go for the oath because I, my problem is that I forget it a lot. So we're going to okay. just do it in the beginning. Oath it is. Oath. We're going to just roll with it. Okay. Can okay. you raise your hand? The lettering one's a little bit different. I promise to be, oh, can everyone repeat after me? Okay. Yes. I promise to be mindful. I, I promise to be mindful. Of the words that I say to myself. Of the, the words, words that, that I say to myself. And the words that I letter on paper. And the words, words that, that I letter, letter on paper. paper. And I promise to remember. And I promise to remember. That I am making something with my own two hands. That I'm making something with my own two hands. And that in itself is beautiful. And, and that, that in itself, itself is beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> That's what it should be. To own two hands. And that in itself is beautiful. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> with my own two hands. And that is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's our oath. Um, we, it was a spinoff of the one Sarah made for watercolor. Just to remind us that, like I said, we were making something with our own hands. It's okay if you get frustrated, but allow yourself to have fun. Make something with us. So the first step that we did is we all actually already outlined our globe. If you don't have this, you can download it on our website at letsmakeart.com. We use graphite paper. Graphite paper is awesome. Place it dark side down underneath, put your outline on top, simply trace. If you want a lighter line, press lighter. If you want a darker line, press harder. Um, do I suggest not to outline this part? We are going to use this at, for our lettering. So don't do that, that's just your guideline. Okay. We're gonna dive on in. Sarah's gonna teach us the watercolor part of it and then we'll do, I didn't say the steps. Step one, watercolor world. Step two, watercolor, what do we call this, apparatus? I yep. call it apparatus. Yep, that sounds yep. right. Perfect. <laughs> Step three, we're going to go through our practice worksheet to do some different letterings. I'll show you guys different letterings. Step four is we're gonna lay it out. Five is black gouache. Okay. Let's roll. Let's do it. Sarah. Step one. We're doing, we're coloring our globe. We're gonna use our aquash brush for this because it's a bigger 
brush than our round zeros. If you even have a larger brush than this, you can even use a larger brush because we're just filling in this big huge circle in the center. So, um, if you're not used to watercolor, you want to make sure that you get your brush wet. And we are using three colors. So we have Tahoe Blue and Magenta and Deep Yellow. So those are the three colors we're going to use to paint our globe. So for the globe, I just use the Tahoe Blue. And then if you want a more turquoisey color, you can grab a tiny bit of yellow and introduce that to the blue and it will create this really pretty turquoise color, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab color with my brush. Is it okay if I move this one over yeah. here? Okay. Oh, oh I have one. Oh, we're good. Okay. Oh, we have four. Look at us. And I'm just gonna take my brush and start coloring in my globe. Now, what I like to do is I like to put the color down and then I actually just like to use water Ooh. to spread it. So I didn't pick up any more paint on my brush, I'm just spreading the color that I already put down. And I had black on here, so just cleaning mine off. It's all good. Now, don't worry too much about getting a perfectly even wash. And perfectly even wash means there's no distinction in value, that it would be the same all the way across. Um, you don't have to worry about too, that too much. You might actually end up getting some blooms, which I can see I'm getting some a little bit right here, which are hard edges. That's just because water is drying at different times. I actually like blooms. I think they make your artwork unique and create really fun, cool textures without having to do a lot of work. So I celebrate them. Um, so, you know, just be nice to yourself as you're, as you're painting this. Campbell, you're doing great. You're doing it right. Shout out to Campbell. Shout out to Campbell for doing a wonderful job. And for the hold when you're painting, for lettering, we hold it usually a little bit closer so that you have a tighter grip. You can allow yourself to, if you want, to have a looser grip. The trick also is to kind of come at an angle if it helps to get more of the belly of the brush if your brush is this size, rather than how we usually hold it where we're trying to get on the tip. Yeah, so I call that more of a horizontal hold. Um, where you're kind of like letting that full brush and that belly hit that paper. That belly. <laughs> the, the belly of the brush. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right term, I Yes, sure. no, it is. It was just <laughs> when you said it, just like, my belly. The belly. <laughs> that is what I say, too. Also, even though we are tracing and have a circle, and an outline, it's still really hard to make it perfectly round. So, you know, I'm giving myself a little bit of forgiveness. Um, and like, if I have to go, I, if I have to make some adjustments as I go because it's looking a little wonky, that's okay. It's not a big deal. Oh, it started raining. You guys yep. hear that? It's very peaceful. It really is. Okay, so really nice. use your water to spread out your color. Now, the reason why I like to use water to spread out my color is it makes it a lighter value and we are painting on top. Now, since we're using black for our lettering on the top, it's not a huge deal how light our wash is because black is gonna pretty much show up no matter what. But if you decide to do this technique and use a different color besides black to do lettering on top, try and keep your wash layer really light by using mostly water, and then that way you can see your lettering. Good job. Ooh, that looks like a cool... I love yeah, that. that. Can I show? Sure. Whoa! That's beautiful. I love it. I love that the his edges are darker. Yeah. I'm going to do that by just... Making mine darker. Oh, got a fun dot. And these are also the blooms. So what happened was I had it, this was a little bit wet. So it was a wet on wet technique where it's wet. And then I went and I painted the watercolors and then just kind of eat, dispersed that way. Cause that's where the water was. Yeah, you have really great blooms. Those are beautiful. I, th I think <gasps> it might be because I used a lot of water. Look at that one. Yeah, that was just cause I had water and then 
I love it. That's kind of like that. Yeah. I know, they're all I different. I feel like you have like a second color going on too underneath it. Like that green pops out more. It's exploding. Gorgeous. You guys are doing so good. Exploding. Okay. Questions? Um, no nope. pie from everywhere. Hello. Hello, everybody. Okay, now we're going to move on to our apparatus. We've got, we've got a howdy over here. Oh. Is that Tamara? It's Eric. Oh, oh it's like Tamara does say howdy. Tamara. Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eric. Is that you said? Yep. You said howdy, everyone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going to do our apparatus. And what? you'll notice. What did you call it? You called it something else on the, the tutorial. Did I? I think, yeah. Anyways, keep going. You'll notice that we don't have brown, but we can mix brown because these colors um, are complementary and that's how you mix brown. Okay, great. Okay. So, what I'm going to do. So, okay. If you want yours to be like more goldy, like bright gold, like brass, you can just use deep yellow. This is deep yellow, just straight, okay? Which is not too far from a brassy color. Um, but if you wanna get a more like wood feel, I'm gonna take a little bit, or like like a um, rubbed, like a, like a rubbed brass feel, like a, vin like a. Old. Yes, brass. like an antique bronze. That's what I was looking Bronze-ish. for. I'm gonna add a little bit of um, magenta to my mix, and I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of blue. Now, whenever you introduce blue to the mixture, it's gonna automatically make your mixture more green, but don't stress, the opposite of green is red, which we're gonna use as magenta, and I'll just mix that back in there. So you just kind of yes. play with it. So now this is kind of more of like a really warm, woodish color. How does honey brown compare to the color we're mixing? Uh, honey brown would actually work great if you have honey brown on hand. You can use honey brown. Honey brown actually um, tends to go like really like yellow in the light values, so just watch out for that. But it would work just fine. Okay, now I have this gorgeous mixture. So I'm going to use this brown mixture and also the pure deep yellow to do my apparatus. Also, they said it's a globe stand. It's just the stand. <laughs> what, did, what did we call it? Apparatus. Apparatus. <laughs> We're just making up words. It sounded right. Well, we didn't make that word up. I didn't make that word up. It's just <laughs> not using it right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. So I have my mixture, and I'm just going to start filling in my stand. That does feel better, actually. Okay. Now, if you want... <laughs> If you want to give it like a metallic feel, if you look at metal things, um, there is a huge value change on metallic things and it's how that metal reflects the light and that's how you can tell that something is metallic in art is by how reflective it is and all the different values within it. So you would just like have highlights and you can get highlights by just adding water which will create a lighter value and you can use... I'm glad my windshield wipers are not broken anymore. <laughs> I am also glad. I really hope my car starts. <laughs> <laughs> so you would just mix up the range of values across the stand. I'm gonna go a little, I'm gonna mix it up just a little bit, but not too much. I'm not gonna go crazy, mostly because um, I don't have a reference for it for the metallic. Um, value change. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that was not planned. You missed it earlier before we were playing some hyphy music. Oh, you were? Yeah. Campbell, I was introducing it to Campbell. If any of you guys were watching the tutorial, you saw Sarah and I say that. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> and then it was in the song. Did you know that? It came from the song. It feels right, I feel it like. It was in Ghost Ride the Whip. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> I figured you both know that, but I thought I'd add it into the conversation. Desiree says apparatus, the technical equipment or machinery needed for a particular activity or purpose. I feel like Boom. that's the correct word. That is the perfect equipment for a purpose. 
a, f- a globe, <laughs> folding a globe. <laughs> if you want to twist the globe, spin you it. Need that it needs this apparatus to do that. Yes. We're not wrong. No. <laughs> okay. Now, when you get to the stand part, this actual what it stands on, you're gonna want to make sure that, like, at the bottom here, like where this centerpiece meets the bottom, there's a darker value because there would be a little shadow there. So if you actually even just want to mix in a little bit of your black gouache, just a little bit to get like a dark brown color, that would work beautifully. Oh, that's smart. Because gouache is an opaque version of watercolor. Yeah. So if you watered it down and you get a black, there you go. That's perfect then that we had a little bit there. Yeah. Tree hugging Buddhist says you should use the thesaurus I sent you. <laughs> I actually gave that to Keenan. Nope. Yeah, I put it on your true. desk. Nope. She said that Keenan should be the holder of the thesaurus. Right. It should be right there. Now this is creativity. It's actually pretty good book. You guys should look into it. That thesaurus is there, or it was on this table. I put it by our video recording equipment so we would have it. What did it look like? It was a blue, small thesaurus. Thick. We'll get it. And I also have this kind of like shadow on this stand, kind of like that metallic sheen that we're going for where it's just a darker value it could also just be a shadow and I put that kind of in the middle in the front middle yeah yep. like an angle yep that rain is getting loud I think The Maybe rain? You. Yeah. Yeah, when well, you guys aren't talking, yeah. <laughs> now, Ken! Uh oh. We got a leak. Door. We got a leak in Our the door's building. Okay, now, to finish off this stand, I have this lip. I'm going to leave a really thin white line between and then do a darker value on the bottom part of this stand. Oh, it's outside. That was me, because I went out that door Sorry. today. Okay. Sorry, Keenan. And the reason why I left a thin white line is because my stand is still wet. And if I touched it with a dark value, then that color would bleed into my stand. And I wanted to be clear. What yeah, part? I did that again. Remember, I think I did this in the tutorial. What? I should, it was so wet that it just bled. Is oh, that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah, but that's okay. I'm talking about this part. Mm. That's why I'm leaving the, see you left a thin white line so it's not bleeding in. Yeah. <laughs> Debbie says nature is providing the water we need for watercolor. <laughs> Fill up your cups. Oh, that looks, that brown? Yeah. I mean, that reddish, like mahogany color. Is that right, Keenan? Mahogany. Isn't it mahogany of a red tint? Yes. I'll double check. Yep, that is spot on with mahogany. Well, I'm going crazy with this mahogany color. Oh, oh, oh. oh whoa, <laughs> whoa. Okay, so to fix that, quickly go back over it. We're all good. It's okay. It's got some. Looks good. Need to make it darker. 
The rain does sound awesome. It's 101 in California. What? Yeah. I knew it was hot everywhere, but I didn't realize in California. Central Valley, oh man. And if you want to put a little bit of a shadow where like these these pieces overlap on the stand oh, on the round part you can because if it if it comes out further than that that piece then there would um, be a value change. Terry says it's 106 in the valley. Ooh. But that's dry heat. It is different than humidity, but know. I don't know where the valley is. It's the valley, the it could be the valley in California, the Sacramento in LA, Valley, or yeah, or there's a valley in Los Angeles. How are you doing? Come on. Nice. Oh, it looks good. Okay, um, that's it. <laughs> good job. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, are we, we done? We painted our stand. That's it. <gasps> Woo! Okay. Let's do some lettering. When you do lettering, there's so many different styles, as we have learned throughout our time together. Um, this practice sheet, like I said, if you don't have it, you can download it on our website. You can use it with your gouache if you want to practice or if you want to do it with your watercolor. So either one, if you want to use it, you can use either one. If you want a letter with gouache, which I'll show you since I don't do this very often, is this is the gouache that came in your kit if you have it. And it's more of a paste-like um, consistency. So this is what I poured out or scored it out. So I need to add a little bit of water to make it a consistency that I can letter with. Otherwise, it would just be too thick. Which, if you can look at, uh, I don't know if they, what we're looking at, if they can see this. Yeah, they can. If you want to side angle, yes, I can do that. Okay. Tell me when I can. Go ahead. Okay. So if you guys can look at this, you can see that there's a little bubble. It's not really a bubble. It's just a ball at the bottom. So that's because I dipped it in and I'd wait. Oh, that was a big one. I'd weigh too much. So what's happening is that it's just sitting on top of it. So if I were to paint, it would just kind of explode rather than if I add just a little bit more water. And when I say add water, I'm just dipping in and moving it over. Mix it in. What you can do is if to prevent that also is I like to roll into the side of my palette. So then if you can look at that, now all the ink is seeped more into it and I can paint a very thin stroke. So if you're having any issues with, the, with this black gouache or even the gold gouache, uh, the gold glitter as gold Keenan glitter. calls it, um, <laughs> um, that's the trick is if you're having issues with it, maybe you need to have a little bit more water. If you have too much water, it'll be more transparent and so it will just be like watercolors, like we were saying. So I'll show that, for example. So when you're doing this worksheet, go through it. This is if it were to look like watercolors. This is my gouache. For this first one, the diagonal lines are to help you, if you look at this straight up and down, to draw your letters at an angle. So I'm following this and all my lines are parallel. Oh my gosh, I never noticed that till right now. That's so helpful that you put diagonal lines. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I didn't notice that. And I struggle with all the angles being That's awesome. the same. Maybe. <laughs> Did I not say that in the, in the tutorial? You could have, and I simply wasn't listening. <laughs> That's awesome. That is really funny. <laughs> That's so, so helpful. I'm well, sorry. you were doing it subconsciously. Well, I was trying because I noticed that this was angled, but I didn't notice that you put angled lines in to help with that. Sorry. That's awesome. so Why are you crazy. saying sorry? No, it's so helpful. That's so exciting. I, I hope other people realize that too now that I say it again. Um, so yes, all of my lines are like this. So it will help. So you're just going to follow these. this line is parallel to this line that's already there. You can download this worksheet, yes? Yes. 
on the website at letsmakeart.com. Yes. Is that what you're waiting for me to say? No, I just, I, I'm not 100% sure that they can hear me. Oh, okay. So. I'll repeat it. Yes, you can. Um, if you go to the lettering section and go to the kits, find the world kit, and then you'll see it there. Okay. Um, are there any specific lettering questions while I'm doing this? Uh, I haven't seen questions so far. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. Oh. I don't know if this person got their question answered. Uh, there was a comment that was similar to their question being answered. So they said, I noticed that you are using pencil brushes. Are they good to use or better than a hairbrush? So I think they're referring to the Aquash brush. I was like, what's a pencil a brush? Body than that does. So they may have been. Uh, oh, this probably looks like a pencil to people. Is that what you're saying? Talking about the Aquash brush. Oh. I don't okay. know what they're talking about. Are you talking about the hairbrush? It was a few minutes ago. So well, I, I didn't mention, and I apologize. I We are lettering right now with this smaller brush. It's a round zero. You, I will switch it up just to show that you can use either one that you have. Um, I think we all just did that naturally. But you can letter also with this aquash brush, so I'll show that. What was the question? Can you use both? Are they good to use or better than a hairbrush? Don't know what a hairbrush is. Can you elaborate on what a hairbrush I is? I wonder if they're talking about the synthetic. Yes, I think that's what this, they're talking This about. is a synthetic stable versus hair. Versus this is, yeah. Versus a real hair. I, I don't, Unless they're that's just playing the only, with our emotions. <laughs> that could be it too. And they're saying hairbrush, like for your hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that. Um, this is, I think it's, remember where I was looking it up? It's nylon. So I think that this is, this is synthetic sable, right? These yeah. ones are? Mm -hmm. And this is nylon, I believe, is the material. So to answer your question, I love them both. Um, I wouldn't say one is better than the other. Uh, this, the aquash brushes come in different sizes. So if you want to experiment, this is the medium one. I love it because you can still get a thin thin and a thick thick. Um, there probably are cheaper non-stable versions that are bad and that's why people are asking questions. Yeah, the worst is when you get like a cheaper brush and you're trying to letter or paint and the bristles yeah. will fall out. While it, if the bristles are falling out while you're painting, then try um, different brushes. If you get one in a watercolor palette that was just from the store, probably don't letter with it. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I will say when you, if you want to and you're trying to look for a brush that works for you, if you're looking at this one specifically, I don't know, can I see that, Keenan? Which angle would you like? Whatever they can, I'm just gonna show the length. That's right. So if you're looking at this, there are some brushes where the tip of the bristles are longer. So I've seen some that are like that. The problem with that is when you go to paint or letter, your bristles might flip awkwardly like that. It might be hard to see, but they might go like that and flip awkwardly when you don't want it to. So that's why these are great ones because they're a little bit shorter. And then I've also seen some that are a lot shorter. And the problem and bummer with that is that it doesn't hold enough ink. And so it's frustrating when you have to dip every single time. So this is a good happy medium. Um, whereas when you're painting with something that is a little bitter, bit bitter, bigger, you will have to get a lot more ink on it. And these do soak up a lot more ink than the smaller ones. The other thing that I didn't mention is with this style of lettering for these four, this style of lettering is the modern lettering that we've been learning. And so what's happening is when your hand is moving up, it's a thin upstroke. And when your hand is moving down, I'm gonna push and get on the belly of the brush and it's going to be a thick downstroke. So that's why in the beginning there was thin and thick. So this style is not created by the movement of my hand. It is simply created by pressure. So I'm pushing harder to get a thick downstroke and I'm lifting up my pressure. You might sometimes lift up a little bit too much so you can just go back over it. But I'm not actually lifting my hand. I'm simply releasing, releasing the amount of pressure. Okay, so 
The other ones that we did, you'll notice the other four are all straight up and down. So that's why there are no diagonal lines for these ones. Um, these are a few different styles that you can play with. This one is more of a bubble lettering. So if you've never done this before, a really quick overview is that what I suggest when you're first doing it is, I don't know if they can see that. Start out with just a block font leave a little bit more space than you might if you were just writing. And you're gonna outline and eyeball the line that you first drew. So that way it's about an even space between my line, so here and here. And then do it again. Let's see, for this one I got a little bit too close, so I'm just gonna go right here. So this will create your bubble lettering. like that. Oh, okay, that's a good example. So I dipped in, and again, I have too much on my um, brush, so I see it go back in, tap it. Like that. And then for this one, I added a shadow, which is picking a light source. It hits the letters. It's casting a shadow on one side. This time, it's my left side. Usually it's always my left side. <laughs> I don't know why, that's what I naturally do, but I just draw a thin line with a little bit of space, so it kind of pops off. Okay. Next one. This one is, if you want more of kind of an old-timey feeling feel, um, there are little legs or arms, you, I don't know what you would want to call them. Um, but this is a serif font. So serif fonts are like Times New Roman if you're looking at um, computer type of fonts. So they're ones that have the little, I was gonna do a little <laughs> little knock. They have um, like feet. Yeah, they're, I was gonna say, there we go, that's the better feet. word. Feet, yeah. yeah. Their head. What did I call them, arms? What did I just call them? It's like on, on a T, there's t a tiny little foot at the bottom oh. where the letter ends, it always comes out a little bit. So it's this. Now I understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, this is, we're using gouache, by the way, yes? Yes. Apparently. The, the reason, yeah. This is, I added a lot more water, so it looks more like watercolor. This is it with a lot more opaque. So yeah, these are the feet. A line right there, and a line right there at the end. So maybe if you want, you can add one right there. And then you can also add a thin stroke next to it. So this time I just picked the right side of every of the strokes, drew a thin line like that, and you're good. How are you doing, Campbell? My hands are very shaky. That looks really good. I think it's looking good. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's cool. There have been a lot of other quotes that I've seen on Instagram. There's a lot of good world quotes. Um, so you can do whichever one you'd like. I'm trying to think of what the other ones were. Maybe you can look on the Facebook group. The World Project. Can it make yourself useful? Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, that wasn't what that was. That was not for you. Um, the last thing that I just want to show while we have this worksheet before we jump into the final project is the way that I built this was that on here, Oh. <laughs> um, I made that this so that your small letters, your lowercase letters, hit this baseline, or it's the weight, this is the waistline, so it's the middle. So think about it, you have the baseline, which is the bottom, you have the waistline, which is where all your X, X height letters hit, and then you have your, your, I don't, cap height? This is, there's so many different terms. Cap height is your top. And so what I wanted to show is that if you wanted to create a completely different style, you don't have to always follow that and maybe you mix it up and you have block letters and you make them smaller. So that's why I did that there. Or you do block letters but make them tall them, taller. So you can do that and it just it creates a completely different style simply by focusing and looking at the height of your letters. Did something happen? Yeah, those little feet are called serifs. That's why the that's why the fonts are serif fonts. <laughs> I swear it's called foot. You're right. They're, 
But how do you describe the serif Thank on a you, font? Thank you, Jessica. We learned this. Hat. That's really bad. I went to school for graph design. Jessica, you're right. But I was trying to describe what the serif was and their little feet. I said serif font, right? Did I yeah, you said it's serif. serif font, yes. But then we were trying to name that specific the little book. part, and it's actually I'm called sorry, graphic serif. design teachers. <laughs> The world is your oyster. Oh, that's Desiree wants to see your lettering. Quote. That's what we're doing. Are there something different than that? <laughs> <laughs> that's what Nicole was asking. That is not the first time I've done that. <laughs> uh, what about the world is your oyster? <laughs> yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. Here's Campbell's lettering. Oh, it looks good. Oh, you even that? made these angled. Nice. Did you do it on purpose? Yeah. 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 No big deal. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. Good job. Okay. We are going to go for the final project. I don't know if Keenan can find other quotes that you can do. Oh, yes. Uh, one is, oh, the places you will go. Oh, that's cute for this. And then... Can I hear you? I was told that they can. Okay. He's got the whole world in his hands. Oh. Oh. Nice. Is that that from a doesn't, song? doesn't Frank Sinatra sing a song about I got the world on a string or something like that? That sounds yes. It sounds right. That sounds right. Let's you just say that's right. Something. <laughs> I'll do that for you. Desiree says good job. Thank you. Okay, final project. You have options. We created this as the template. If you'd like, if you're looking at this, you can see that it's similar. I like to do this because if you're staring at a blank page and you don't know where to start, just let yourself start here. So you can either do that and you can use this as your template and you can go through this exercise with us and fill this in. Or what Sarah's gonna do is she's going to just use her pencil and letter directly on top of her final project just make sure you're, do well actually, it's okay if you do it darker because we're gonna go over it in black. So don't worry so much about that. It'll just be if you erase a lot, um, but that's. Yeah, I'm gonna do it lightly just in case I have to erase. I should put this here. Um, yeah. How about Adventures Await? Oh, that's cute. I love that. I like that. Is there anything else? Oh, the, well. Danison okay. is gonna do one with a whole new world. Oh. Because he loves Disney. <laughs> Did you see the new Aladdin movie? No. I haven't seen it I either. I don't need to because it's got my favorite music in it. Danison, I'm going to do I liked oh, it. Oh, that was close. Um, Danison, wait. Can I? I'm going to say this. There were a few people, Danison, I know you're one of them, um, for my birthday, made a little video and sent some birthday wishes. Um, it was really sweet. Yesterday was my 30th birthday. Um, spent it here in Missouri working. But. I was with great people. We had a great time. It was yeah. so much fun. Um, and Taylor made a very sweet video with some of our Let's Make Art members. So thank you so much if any of you are watching. That meant so much to me. Um, I wasn't expecting that. It was really cool. So thank you. OK, I think I'm going to just mix it up. I'm going to do a whole new world just to show you guys something different. Um, you have to sing it. I can. You can sing While it. you write it. Um, but. I want to show you that you can still use this template even if you use a different quote. So for example, if I'm going to use this instead of writing the, let's see, do I want to do it? So I'm trying to decide if I want to make it curved or straight. When you're thinking about this, it's more of the feel you want to evoke. Sometimes I want it to be a little bit more whimsical, so maybe I'll do that. I'm going to make it curved like that. A, a whole new world. Whole. You make this in a block font to fit. It's not gonna fit. If this happens to you, it's okay. You erase. Nothing wrong with that. Whole. Let's do that in cursive, new. Oh, how, oh, so this is the opposite. Wow, look how perfect that looks. Or that works, <gasps> not looks, works. That works perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Danison. <laughs> okay. Ooh, Keenan. 
go change the world. What do you have? Oh, I love that. Is that plugged in? Can be. Can you plug that in for Throw me? It out. Okay. So, like I said, there are different options for. Oh, you can say hi. Oh my gosh. Um, for transferring your lettering. So if you did it like me on your template and you got all you got all that out, you have the option to either have this right next to you, do the same thing and use your pencil and lightly sketch it and do it again. Or I am a big fan of light boxes when it comes to lettering. Um, does it work? It's or good no? to go. Okay. Oh Sarah, can you hand me that? Mm -hmm. Does it have to Thank say plugged in? Yes. Um, so I like to use light boxes. Light boxes are essentially just, ooh, is this an apparatus? Yes. 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 It is a <laughs> hand lettering apparatus. <laughs> um, that has a light source underneath, so it allows me to trace. I'm going to make this a little bit darker so I can make sure that I see. Let me see if this works. Nope, I need a Sharpie. So what's happening is it's, oh, forgot there's three settings on here. Oh no, we're good. Um, so if you do have a light box, you just need to make sure that it is dark enough so that you can see through. If you don't have a light box, here's a few hacks. One, get a casserole dish, plate that's clear, place it upside down, put your, light, put your phone on flashlight mode, have it facing up, boom. If you can get it to go to flashlight mode, it is tricky. Sorry, subject. <laughs> I struggle with that for some reason. Um, Keenan, what's option two? If you don't have a, if you don't have a phone, if you don't have a smartphone, what can you use? Oh, a headlamp. A headlamp. <laughs> <laughs> I just have several of those for some reason. So. Or. If you are okay with it, you can take your outline, go up to a window, tape that, and then tape your painting on top of it. And you, if you're okay painting up, um, standing up, then you're good there. I'm using painter's tape to keep this down. We're gonna go for it. Sorry. No, you're fine. Oh, wanna know the fun fact we learned about blue tape today? What? Do you know why it's called blue tape? Besides the fact that it's blue? Well, yes. Why? The white's blue. Do you know why it's blue? I guess I should have said that. Why? It's just a marketing scheme. They want it to be more easily found, and they own the color. The medium blue, 3M owns that color. Can you own a color? Turns out you can. Wow. For tape, they own that color. 3M makes this tape? Yes. Yeah, I think it says it on there. We... <laughs> we should order. We should order this for our store. I thought we had it. I don't know. We don't know. carry it yet. We don't carry it yet, but we will. <laughs> is what we're trying to say. That's why me and Keenan are looking yes. at each other. <laughs> oh, that is so weird. I thought we did. Okay. Um, I'm going to focus when I'm doing this on the thin, on the up, thick, on the down. And I want to show you that. Even if you're doing a block font, you can still do that. So thick on the down, thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. I must what world a hole. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm doing so good. Heck yes. Oh, geez. I'm loving what I'm doing. Oh, I love that. I'm switching it up. Wow, it's in a good spot? Yep. Wow. Also, it's been like a nightmare, but there's, I have a sample coming for a uh, light box with Let's Make Art logo on it. Oh. oh. That we will hopefully, once we get the logo and it's all good to go, carry those as well on our website. Sweet. I want to use this as a learning opportunity to show you guys something. Ease. You can dictate where the middle line goes. So sometimes I feel like it, sometimes I want to make it high, sometimes I want to make it low. Tonight I want to, well, the other thing is that I'm actually thinking about, so this is called the crossbar of your letters. So this is the crossbar of my H. I'm actually just going to mimic it and do it right here. So I guess it is kind of in the middle, but it's a little bit below. 
but you can change, create a whole new style that I do want to show because I love this about lettering. No pun intended because you wrote a whole. Thanks. Is H, you can draw your crossbar low, you can draw your crossbar in the middle, you can draw your crossbar high. Creates a completely different look just by simply moving your crossbar. Have fun. You're welcome. <laughs> Cecilia says, yes, you can own a color. Tiffany owns a turquoise color. Oh, that's so true. Tiffany, Tiffany blue. blue. The gift bags, sunglasses, cases, etc., are all that color. What color should we own? Black? <laughs> that's a power move. It is. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Hi. Oh, you're sketching away. It's looking good. It's making you nervous that I'm watching you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yes! Done. That looks so good. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Are there any questions, Keenan? Did you choose that quote? The world is your oyster? Absolutely, you I somewhere? did. Nicole chose it. This is her project, Keenan. <laughs> I'm making another quote joke since I made a mistake earlier. Uh, I, have no, I have no questions. Uh, Courtney said another way to transfer something is using graphite paper. Yeah. Yes. You totally can. Oh, option four, five. Graphite 362. paper. <laughs> 362. 363. Hold it up year. to a window. 364, hold it up to a light. <laughs> okay, oh, you also said street light. Yeah, I said street light. If you, it's nighttime, then maybe a bright moon. A full moon would absolutely do the trick. Yeah, I've <laughs> seen a full moon out here. It's bright for days. You should try to use it on our lights here. Right. I have actually done that before. Does it work? Uh huh. This is, this that's a light box. Be perfect because yeah. yeah. I just would, I held it up to that one when it was a lot closer and just traced. Worked great. Cecilia says, Sarah, I love your oyster. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. A whole new world. I feel really good about my S, actually, in that oyster, because, man, that S, the S is get me, because there's two flippies in an S. And so it's like... Flippies. Yeah, flippies. When you're trying to do a curve with your yes, I like how it ties into the T. Curves are <laughs> interesting. What? <laughs> Tether is just like just random people holding up a piece of paper to a 50 foot light pole at midnight. <laughs> we just go outside at midnight. We're holding up things. <laughs> That's how we know if you're a LMA or a yeah, llama. Exactly. <laughs> That's what Joe Michaela just said too. Imagine walking outside at night, seeing a guy just holding a painting up to the moon, squinting and holding a paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see that. I would take a picture immediately. I would look at that person and be like, "You and I are the same, my friend." <laughs> if there was no moon, it might be weird. But if there's a moon. Um, okay, so I want to show you guys while I have this. I just did my pull everything with just one go at it. Now I'm gonna add in the serif to my serif lettering. Yeah. Good job. Wow. Right here. So I'm gonna add lines on top. Meh. So it would create a different look. On the O's, sometimes it's a personal preference Technically, where this intersection is is where it would go. I don't really want one right now, so I'm not going to do one. It's up to you. And then the us, other personal preference when it comes to serif is if you guys can see that I didn't have this line come all the way through. I just had it stop right there. And then here, I had it start there and then go down. So that's another personal preference thing that you can go with. Then I'm going to add in, like I did, my thin line to the right. 
And when I'm doing this, if you can see, I'm just lightly grazing the tip of my brush. So you do not have to press very hard to create a stroke. If you want, you can also, so let's keep going with different techniques. For new, I'm gonna try to do, even though there's already thin and thick, we can create a photography look without um, essentially coloring in the inside, which is very similar to this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thick down strokes, I'm gonna add a line and do it like that. So if I were to do photography, I would just color that in. So I guess it's similar to what I was doing before. Also, this might throw, well, all good, too late. I did them differently. This one, it's on this side, and this one, my extra line's on that side. It's all good. And then, let's see, what else can we do for this? Um, what was the other one that we did? Oh, I did a block font. I already didn't do that. Um, Oh, I'll do the shadow. So I'm going to add a thin line on the shadow. So instead of connecting them, I'm just going to draw my line right there. And then if you want at the end, you can either draw, let's see, you can draw lines that come out of it. You can draw some doodles on it. So you can draw doodles. Sarah's doodling. I'm just doodling. It reminds me of... I love it. High school when I had to pay attention in lectures and I would just doodle in the side the entire time. Oh, I would do that too. Hmm. Kenan, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I got you. You know what's funny? What? I would doodle, but I realized I would write one word, like whatever he was talking, he or she was talking about, and then I'd just... I do this all the time. If I were writing whole, uh -huh. and I just color, just make things thicker or lines like that and play with it. No wonder you're into lettering. Look at you. I never thought about that because I didn't think I liked lettering before. <laughs> Turns out it was always your calling. <laughs> That's funny. What'd you do? Me? In class? <laughs> I didn't. But what would you have done? Played hoops. I would have just dreamt about um, wow, that's awesome. Let me see it. Look what he did. Let me see it. Yeah. Uh, Can we show everyone? Show the class. You present to the class. Yeah. Looks good. Oh, nice. sorry. Look at all these. This shows you that there's so many different ways that you can do this one project. Um, is there anything else that? No, no should we all hold so them up at? I didn't finish my doodles, but that's okay. I'm surprised there are no questions. Maybe because I said last time. But yes, Campbell. Yeah, I haven't seen any questions. Audrey, I would write. Wait, was Audrey the one who made that? Or is that a different Audrey? I don't know. Audrey, are you the one who did our llama? Audrey Reed. She's the one that I talked to because I helped her with some of her lettering. I put her llama up there. I know. Audrey, did you make that for us? I don't know if she can see that. Is that you? Did you paint us a llama and send it in? <laughs> <laughs> okay. She'll answer. Ooh, you know what I'm gonna do? What? Because I have, here's the epitome of if you make a mistake, how do you make it better? Someone was saying this to me earlier. Oh, in the last Q&A, someone was asking me, it was Ramona, I think, or Raylan, was asking me how to um, fix your mistakes. Mm -hmm. And then someone said, just add splatter dots to it. And I'm gonna do that right now really quickly while Keenan's getting. Oh, like because, because the color's yeah. weird? Yeah, so can you guys see that? Smeared right there, it went like that. Nice. Sorry, Campbell, we took over your. Oh, it was Audrey. Audrey, thank, thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. 
We put it up on our set. We can show. We love Gina, it so much. Wanna, oh, you can grab it. I can show it. I can switch to this other. This, I need to use a different. Do you need to use mine? Well, no, I think it's because this holds in the ink so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some splatter. So I'm just dipping it in water, moving it around. Sorry, I'm getting this light box really dirty. We're going to do actually more of this in our Let's Make Art Matter coming up. Michelle B says it was me. <laughs> Michelle. I don't know if you're telling the truth. No, no. We don't oh, was she talking about who was asking me the question? No. Oh. <laughs> I thought she was yeah, talking about painting the llama. That's a little splatters. Yes. Sarah, you like to do the splatters like this, right? Don't you? I can't do that with this brush because it's too small. Um, Show me how you like to do splatters. Okay, Jean said, I'm so confused about what you used on the globe, brush or pen. If you're talking about the lettering, Jean, we, you can either use your round zero paint brush or your aqua bru aquash brush. So they're both brushes. I used a pencil to sketch it out and then went over it with a paintbrush. Whereas I had a light box and I traced, but I also used the brush. You can use we have we were learning brush pens a little bit um with our spring lettering box and so if you have the black Fudenosuke or the black tombow do a brush pen you can do that too oh yeah they'll work beautifully yeah, that would work um oh wait will you show me really quickly you do your splatters oh yeah i did many ones um to do bigger ones you you need a bigger brush we'll be we'll see that soaks up a lot of ink okay so you get it nice and wet and then you just like stab Oh. Yeah, I mean? Stab. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but you can like, oh. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool to mix them up. Yeah, I like mixing it up. Some small, some big. Okay. okay we're going to hold it up. Oh, yours might leak. That's okay. I'll add to it. Meh. Okay, Come closer, gonna, Campbell. You're so far away. Okay, Campbell. There you are. Beautiful, beautiful world. Nicole, Nicole. Mama, I'll like your daughter, say. Yes, Nicole. Nicole. There it is. Sarah. <laughs> hey, Kitty, can, can you walk face? back and oh, yeah. show them the llama? Yeah. People want to see the llama. Right. No, you can go grab it. Oh, you can zoom in that close? Yes. Dang, that thing's legit. It's my phone, so it should be. But there we go. That was it. Well Great. Done. Great job, you guys. Jean, she used the aquash brush to paint the globe. Oh, maybe she was asking on how to actually paint the globe Oh, yeah, part. the painting of the globe. We use the aquash brush. Because it's bigger. But you can also use a round six. Or any paintbrush. The larger the better because it's a big size. Yes. Okay, we're done. We did it. Mm -hmm. High five all around. Thank you, everyone. We will have a new lettering tutorial releasing tomorrow, which is we're going to be lettering on wood. Woo! We're going to be using gouache again, so you can use it yet again. Another time to use it. I'm really excited. It's a bonus project or special project. Um, and we'll see you then. Bye.